Hey guys, Dude Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over some mechanics in the game of Oxygen Not Included. Today we're going to be going over the self-cooling steam turbine setup. If you guys are familiar with this setup, it's very straightforward, but those of you that don't know, we'll go over it right away. The self-cooling steam turbine takes the output water of the steam turbine to cool the building itself before going back into the steam room. The logic being is that the output water is fixed at 95 degrees Celsius with the volume of water tied to the number of spokes open. Each one of these spokes right here, and there's five in total, gives you 400 grams of water as long as they're pumping in steam. That means if the uh, intake is blocked off by a door or a tile, it's actually fine as you just get less water. And of course, that changes some of the efficiencies of the steam turbine. We're not going to be getting into that though, as that is going to be not something we need to get into for today's build. Now, of course, the steam temperature does not actually dictate the temperature of the water coming out. This is always going to be fixed at 95 degrees, regardless of if you intake 125 degrees steam or 200 degrees steam you always get 95 degree liquids coming out of the output pipe. Now the steam turbine only operates if its internal temperature is below 100, meaning that if it hits 100 or goes above it, it actually ceases to function and you lose your steam turbine from running. So because of that, you're a little bit worried about the steam turbine and of course it does generate heat out of itself. You get a 4K flat constant modifier on top of a percentage of the steam depending on the temperature of the steam that you intake. Of course, that means it's gonna be this temperature, not the bottommost temperature. So this temperature of the steam that it intakes or ingests is going to have a 10% portion of it in DTU values applied to the steam turbine. Of course, because of that, at a certain point, the self-cooling design is gonna to start to fail as the steam gets too hot. Those limits are actually going to be at 135 is the safe limit, and 140 degrees Celsius is going to be the upper limit. Those two values are dependent on whether or not you're willing to push your steam turbine eventually in the long run, uh, assuming 100% uptime as well, that it will hit either 100 or 99.5. Those are our two values for the upper end. The 140 degrees steam temperature is going to be eventually pushing the turbine to 100. But if the output water we drip back in cools it, it will eventually cool the steam so that we'll be able to handle it. However, if you have a constant steam temperature, that's going to be 135 on average is going to be the 99.5 threshold. Meaning that if you maintain your steam temperature, let's say that you're cooling like a volcano, running multiple aqua tuners, that as long as the steam turbine in the steam room is less than that degrees in temperature Celsius, the self-cooling design will work. Of course, if you push it above or it fluctuates a lot of times, depending on how high it spikes and how long it stays at that temperature, the design may fail. However, we're going to be able to actually improve upon the range of the steam we're going to be able to self-cool with. And the design differences we'll show you today are going to be utilizing the Wheeze Ward. Now, of course, a couple things about the Wheeze Ward is that because it's 95 degrees Celsius before it ceases to function, we can't actually run it in the same room as a steam turbine, as you could easily see that with the output water at 95 and that the turbine in and of itself easily goes over 95, the Wheeze Wards are going to cease to function. So our design today is going to showcase how to utilize all that, utilize a little bit of power enough that the steam turbine is actually able to provide power for the build separately. So you don't need anything additional if you guys don't want to, because as long as your turbine runs, the build will work. So the designs are as shown. This is a for testing purposes because we are in sandbox mode how the design should look like and we're running them side by side so that we could guarantee that the build runs in the long term. For the most part, we have both the upper limits and the average limits here, meaning that you could reach up to 212 with this design. However, on average, you'll be around 207 to push this over to 99.5. This will push it to 100 degrees. And of course, the temperatures we're talking about is the temperature of the building of the steam turbine in and of itself. Of course, that means that with four Wheeze Wards, it will get up to 197, with the average of 192, top in with three is 183, with the average of 178. With two Wheeze Wards, you go up to 168, and then you have the average at 163. And then the single Wheeze Ward added to the design is going to be increasing it from the 140 to 154. Of course, the average is going to drop to 149, so this is the safe value. So. 
if you guys are feeling a little bit dangerous you guys could go for the top value and run that for a little bit eventually i would advise for you guys to lower the steam temperatures any way you can to the bottom temperatures so of course this is one two three four five leaves worth and these are the temperatures accordingly now the design is very simple we had to separate basically the steam turbine room and the wheezewort room before we run the radiant piping of the output water by taking the output liquid that's at 95 degrees and lower it even more we're increasing the effective range of cooling since we're having output water lower than 95 degrees come out to cool the steam turbine we effectively increase the temperature steam range that it's uh, able to actually go up to because our turbine is going to actually be able to absorb more heat due to the lower temperature output water. So as we see right here, it's a very simple design. We take the output of the steam turbine, immediately have that go up, and then have that go across. We only have one radiant pipe per wheeze word, meaning that the radiant pipe should be on top of the wheeze word in and of itself. And we only have the number of radiant pipes tied to the wheeze wards. So one wheeze ward, one radiant pipe, three wheeze wards, three radiant pipes, five wheeze wards, five radiant pipes. As you can see right here, I recommend having the radiant pipe on the stack right at the base of the wheeze ward, not the tile. And that's because that's going to be the tile that the wheeze ward exhales out the cool gas. This allows you to capitalize on the immediately chilled hydrogen. And of course, in every room, the top room and the middle room, we have 2,000 grams of hydrogen per tile. Of course, because the wheeze words actually consume it inside the planet of itself, it's actually going to displace some of the hydrogen volume due to the intake and release of it. So it's going to reintroduce hydrogen on the central tile, which causes a little bit of the volume to kind of displace. So because of that, we can't really see that it's 2,000 grams per tile, but every room is, and you guys are able to assume that you guys could do that. So 2,000 grams per tile in each one of the top rooms, and then radiant pipe tied to the wheeze wards. Now, of course, these values right here, 154 are the top values, 168 is up top, 183 is up top, 197 is up top, and the 212 is up top as well. And of course, while we run the radiant pipe through the steam turbine room, I recommend doing a zigzag pattern like this. If you guys only run a straight line through this at the bottom or any other combination that's less radiant pipes, you're going to actually not absorb enough heat from the turbine, which will cause the turbine to fall. Uh, and as well as having the hydrogen gas available is very critical. Using other gases is not actually recommended as hydrogen is the best gas for the task. However, if you guys don't happen to have hydrogen, you guys can use something like natural gas. Although it's not recommended, hydrogen is going to be the best case scenario as the calculations for the values of everything was done using the hydrogen value. Of course, you could see right here, depending on how hot your steam turbine gets, you guys could choose a build accordingly. If you guys are worried that the wheeze ward is going to overchill the hydrogen and eventually freeze the water, you guys don't have to worry about that as the 2000 grams of 95C water is going to take a long time to actually reach below zero and freeze in the pipes. Now. When getting this build started, the temperature of the wheeze warts is actually going to pull the liquids cooler than it actually should. And that's because the wheeze wart plant in and of itself has pretty good thermal stats of a specific heat capacity. And not only that, when you plant it into the box, it resets the temperature of the plant to 20 degrees. So because of that, it will have to climb up and it will eventually get hot, which is why we approach 99.5 with the bottom and why we approach 100 degrees with the top. Eventually, the wheeze wards won't be able to cool the hydrogen enough, but with the math calculations, you will never actually go over 99.5 if you stay with the bottom values of steam. Now, for purposes, our box is a little bit different. We have the uh, dripped water from the output of the steam turbine go into an infinite tank so that the steam temperature stays consistent. This was for testing purposes and as well as this not being practical as something you guys would want to build 
or because you guys don't want to have an auto sweeper in here in order to make sure the planter boxes are topped off there's going to be some design changes and this is more so what i would recommend for people building the box the steam turbine in and of itself does not ever require your duplicates to have access to the inside and because of that you shouldn't need to ever go into the steam turbine room that's due to the fact that the building of the steam turbine will only ever go up to 100 because of state change two degree state change well it's 2.5 you will never actually have your liquid breaker pipes because the highest they will ever go is 100.1 since they'll never be able to hit 101.6 they are never actually going to become steam because of that, you should safely assume nothing will ever break inside unless it has an issue with your power wire overlay. Now that being said, I do have liquid locks with the vacuum door design for the steam room because you may have to add other things. Maybe you guys have to fix an aux tuner. Maybe it pulled too much power and the wire is overloading. Who knows? And for the top, it's because you're may going to, because you may not have auto supers at the time, you guys may want to choose to top off your Wii's Wards Phosphorite because these need to be domesticated in order for the build to work. However, you could see that every time a dupe goes in and goes out, because of the vacuum door setup, you have a little bit of gas loss and you will have to crush it. That, because of that, I recommend getting an auto sweeper, but if you guys can't, you guys could tie a reservoir to a gas vent so that it will always top off the hydrogen at 2000 grams so that you never have to worry about it and then you could crush this anytime you need to or do a better automation setup for that if you guys also choose to allow the doors to not be here and have that leak out understand that the heat from this box will leak out and it will eventually cause some heating issues although that wouldn't happen for a while you guys will have to have that running for a couple hundred cycles before you guys notice any of the heat leaking out and when you do it's something you, that you guys could pretty easily fix by just vacuuming up the setup or putting an auto sweeper and then putting a vacuum door so that you guys don't allow access through and this becomes self-sufficient now you guys might be wondering is this a lot of power no uh we actually use point a point percentage less than one percent of power in which case this is only 120 watts anyways any one of our steam turbines very easily provides enough power for all that so you guys could easily tie a steam turbine to the auto sweeper to keep that running before you actually feed this to your centralized power on a transformer that way you guys could have this on a same line without worrying about it of course, you guys don't have to use your phosphorites in a tile delivery service like this. You guys could just dump it into the inside of the room as well. I just like putting it here so that we had better calculations for the testing purposes. But guys, these are the values, these are the limits, and these are the improvements I would make to the self-cooling steam turbine setup. If you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and of course guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.